Many of you may like this show. You come here, there's uh, around 12,500 or so uh, of you, and we, we love that you come to this show. Yes, we do. But YouTube has been increasingly shutting down content creators. And this has started over the past few years. And as I've predicted and many others have predicted, what we think is happening, YouTube wants to completely get rid of this. They, they completely want to get rid of the independent, homegrown, small business media outfit. Now, there are a lot of people who say really dumb things, and they were the first to go. And I still think it's wrong because I believe in free speech, even for people who aren't smart. It's kind of weird that these people believe that if you're not smart enough, you're not allowed to speak, but that's what they're doing. Well, it's slowly getting worse and worse. So we just saw two major complete shutdowns on YouTube, and it's kind of worrying. Let, let's, let's, let's start with Ariel Scarcella. Yeah, we'll start and, with and Ariel. That, what I think, it's just it, these are the two people we know. Right. You right. know what I mean? Oh, I know so, tons of other channels. I've seen them all over. So if all, it's all happened over. to these two, like I can only imagine the, the amount that is across the board. It's a lot. So go ahead. So, go ahead. so here's what's been happening. Over the past several years, they've been slowly starting with demonetizations. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, saying, oh, no, this video is no good. This video is no good. And they're, they've, they've, been, they've started a hard manual review of every single channel, removing people from the partner program, which means you can't make money anymore. You're out. That means if you don't make money, they don't recommend your content because YouTube prioritizes content with ads in it because they want to make money. Yep. So there's some good news for the high profile YouTubers who have already broke through. You are going to get more money because these, these other creators are being purged. That means the available ad space is going down. Yep. I think I know why they're doing this. There's a couple of reasons. And one of them is, is ad space related supply and demand. But let's, let's take a look at what happened first. We have this tweet from Ariel Scarcella. She was a guest on this show last month or so. Mm -hmm. And this is a tweet from January 2018. She said, over the past year, YouTube has been killing ads on most, around 79% of my videos. If you'd like to help fund my LGBT educational content, please donate to her Patreon. There are tons of great rewards and Skype calls from me. Well, shortly after appearing on this show, she tweeted this. This is from a couple days ago. I didn't want to post this publicly, but YouTube creators has demonetized my entire channel for the past three weeks. If you, uh, if you appreciate my content, please support my work through Patreon. If you can afford it, a few dollars goes a long way. This is an email she received that says, during a recent review, our team of policy specialists carefully looked over the videos you've uploaded to your channel, Ariel Scarcella. We found that a significant portion of your channel is not in line with our YouTube partner program policies. As of today, your channel is not eligible to monetize and you will not have access to monetization tools and features. Please go to your monetization page to read more about the specific policy our specialists flagged. Now, this seems to be YouTube escalating their enforcement because Ariel talks about adults, you know, stuff. Yeah. You know, sexuality, relationships and things like that. Mm -hmm. But it was it was OK for the longest time. The media, these people that are, you know, that compete that YouTube competes with, who don't like them, then start writing all these fake, all this fake news, all these smears that are just not true. Alg alg algorithmically, you know, uh, proven false. P researchers from Berkeley, even, you know, and Berkeley Super Progressive proved that the rabbit hole narrative is just all not true. Right. But this is part of what YouTube is doing to purge creators. Yeah. So the rules are getting stricter. They're retroactively giving people guideline strikes, which brings me now to one of the more worrying demonetizations. Because look, Ariel, in my opinion, shouldn't have been demonetized. I agree. They, sh they should have. They should have said the specific content we don't want. You know, it's it's. I get it. I'll also point out, YouTube has no obligation to be your ad sales manager. Right. If if nobody wants to watch your content, you, it's not YouTube's job to market for you and sell your ads. But uh, so so I, again, I don't think it's fair that she was banned. But she did talk about adult stuff. Now Luke, on the other hand, talks about news, and this is what Luke tweeted. This is this is just from a couple hours ago. Just uh, just had YouTube totally take away my income, and now my entire channel is demonetized. Why YouTube creators? This is how I survive. Why do this now, especially during these difficult times? Thank you to everyone who helps here. You want to know why this is so egregious, in my opinion? Hmm. Of all of the times YouTube could destroy someone's business, they're doing it at a time when the economy is already under massive strain. Yeah. And the last thing we need is for someone like Luke to lose his job. Now, I've taken some action to try and mitigate the potential risk because I don't think I'm safe. How long until YouTube comes and you know gives the ban hammer to me or anybody else? Right. You know, Luke said there was no specific video or violation, no strikes, nothing. How the hell am I supposed to change anything if I don't know what to change? And my livelihood is dependent on this. This is cruel, YouTube creators. Yep. It doesn't matter. They don't care. 
Meanwhile, Facebook is running ads of Chinese state propaganda blaming Trump for COVID-19. YouTube will run overt fake news from mainstream media that just says, you know, Trump is bad. People will fall for it. They'll go insane. And then a week later, it turns out Trump was right. Right. So the, the example I used uh, in the, uh, just a few minutes ago, I did a video on my second channel about the uh, uh, Wuhan CDC lab near the, 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 the wet market. The Washington Post wrote and got a quote from a Rutgers professor saying that there were security risks and that there had been breaches before and we should consider the possibility. It's basically what they were saying. We don't know for sure. We do think the most likely is natural occurrence, but it may have been a breach from a, from a lab. YouTube demonetized that video because they have told me I'm not allowed to say the virus may have originated in a lab, even though the mainstream media says it. So this system can't function. But I'll tell you what I, th- what I think they're doing. When you have YouTube with, I think there was like a couple, it was like a hundred million channels and most of them don't produce anything. You have essentially infinite supply, minimal demand. So what ends up happening is when a company like Pepsi wants to run ads, they're like, I can just sell an ad for a penny or I, I can buy an ad for a penny because there's so much content mm-hmm. that the demand is, uh, the supply is infinite. You know, it's like, what am I worried about? How can YouTube artificially suppress the supply so that Pepsi is forced to pay two cents, three cents, four cents, five cents or more? Ad rates are really, really low on YouTube, which made it hard for them to attract high profile and high budget projects. Like, I'll tell you what, man, the amount of money that it would cost me on YouTube to make a like a really nice, beautiful documentary is a fraction of the cost it would be for any other production company. Okay. So like Vice, for instance, would spend $50,000 on a 10 minute segment. I could do it for a couple grand. But what ends up happening is when you get people constantly cutting costs and making low quality content, then advertisers don't want to be associated with it. Yep. You have a massive supply of cheap content that's not worth anything and YouTube can't make money. So YouTube finds an excuse. Ooh, everyone's complaining about politics. Let's start purging everybody. That way we, we can force all of these companies to spend more on digital ads on, on, on YouTube because it is valuable to a certain degree. That will drive up the amount of money the, 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 the YouTubers get, and then they'll increase their production quality. So I wonder if the actual reason these people are being purged is because their production quality was too low. Or they, they didn't have the following that... Luke that, had 620, has 622,000 subscribers. Yeah, but were, was his videos... I, I don't really look at his YouTube channel, but was it... Um, were they popular? And were they... Uh, like, ad? were they advertised? Or like, were they able to be you know, advertised in, in a sense, like, you know, you said Pepsi as an example. So wouldn't Pepsi want to be advertised on, I don't know, drinking this stuff, I guess. Yeah. People drink Pepsi while they're relaxing, whatever. But like, you know, aren't ads like kind of catered to the video? Not, not always, but yes. No? Like right? political stuff. Like, you'll see dude, political stuff. Political you know? ads are gone right now. Right, because yeah, like the political landscape is wiped out. Yeah, there isn't any. This is, this is crazy. So, uh, so I'll I'll tell you too. From you know a business standpoint, ad revenue is down, 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 like bad down for everybody, and it's going down every single day. Media companies are laying people off. We're seeing uh, a lot of companies either do layoffs or pay cuts. CEOs skip their salaries. Mm-hmm. But yeah, even for us, ad revenue is dropping substantially now because I am on my main channel do politics like ad revenue dropped off to a ridiculous degree, more than 50%. It's like overnight, it's like, whoa, all of a sudden gone. Yeah. So that's why I've done a few more sponsored spots. But what's what's uh, what's worrying is, you know, I can't, I can't say exactly why they purged Luke, but right now of all the times to do it. So when they started demonetizing my content, they were, they were demonetizing everything coronavirus related. YouTube is not a good place to run a business. Absolutely not. There's a good opportunity because they market for you. That's really what it's all about. Yeah, but you said it yourself. They don't have any obligation to put ads on your channel. Right. Right. So so here's the problem. YouTube has taken the entire industry, the ad agency, mm-hmm. the marketing company, and the hosting provider, put them all together, which just destroyed all the competition. They've incentivized everyone to come to their platform and spend years building this stuff up. Luke's been producing on, on YouTube for like, I mean, how long has it been? 15 years? Some ridiculous number. Like, wow. Yeah. So uh, 13 or so years. Because he, he's, he's been on YouTube since it started. Because he's always been like, you know, alternate media, alternative media and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. So they tell you all these things. And then without breaking the rules, without breaking any contracts, they destroy your business. I'll put it this way. 
Here's how I've always explained to people. Imagine if you found a building in your town and you're like, this building looks great. And you went to the bank, you bought it, put everything together, paid your taxes. And then one day your the, the, the local town comes in and says, the first thing we're going to do is physically relocate your business out of downtown 40 miles away from the city. You'd be like, whoa, but then no one will ever come in to buy, you know, my cookies that I'm making. Yeah. That's what YouTube did first, deranking your content so that no one can find it. Right. And then they argue, okay. oh, but people could still go buy if they want to. Yeah, but are they going to look for it? Right. Then they remove you from search. Now you can't Google search my channels. Nope. T- Tim Cass and Tim Cass News, not in Google. Yeah, that's not. So that's why another reason why I'm like, you got you to gotta, you know, change things up. Now what they're straight up doing is, imagine you bought a building and they said, you're going to be good, build your business here. All your customers come in, build it the area, and then they come in and just crush your building, destroy it outright without warning, without breaking any contracts. You didn't break any rules. So like you kind of touched on it a little bit earlier. Do you think it's because YouTube is losing the ad revenue? So they're purging a lot of people to make yep. the, the ads worth more. So then they'll just make more money. Yep. Right. So it's, it's I think it's a combination of factors. Yeah. YouTube is the comp and, and the media compete with each other to a to a certain degree, right? CBS and Fox and CNN, they're all on YouTube. They use it. YouTube wants to attract high profile, high production quality shows. They do like so my main channel, it's like a browser window with my face in the corner. Right. I can't imagine they like that. Right. Now, this is different. This is multi camera lights, set design and everything. So yeah. production quality has gone up. Luke was doing and, and I, I mean, I, I mean, no disrespect. Luke had a lower production quality. Okay. He had like, you know, a grainier camera, but he was doing similar things to what I was doing with your face in the corner. That's why I'm saying I don't know how long I am for this world. Yeah. This show I think they might like because it's like a live show with multiple cameras, but we're still not like the daily show right. where you do everything pre-scripted and it's all this fake stuff or whatever. True. But I think that's an excuse. They they want to get higher 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 uh, quality content which requires better paying ads. They want Hollywood to come to you know YouTube and use them as a platform. Yeah, they want to be Netflix. Right. And they can't so long as they have people on YouTube screaming about the Illuminati and lizard people. So I do think they like me. The the theory that I've had for a long time as to why I think YouTube tolerates me is that there's a certain amount of conservatives who do watch me, mm-hmm. but I'm not over o- overtly conservative. So I don't, you know, so they there are people like, you know, Steven Crowder, for instance, they take away his monetization. They say, you say naughty words, boom, you can't make money. For me, it's like more moderate. Okay. So they, they, they don't want to lose any of their users. And if they start banning everyone on the right, they'll lose all their users. And so I, we, we did a survey and I think it was something like, you know, 17 to like 25% of the people who watch me identified as conservative. Okay. So I think what YouTube sees is here's a guy who, if we ban the conservatives, they'll stay around to watch him. So we won't lose them. So keep him around. They don't like me. They don't like what I say, but it's safe for the brands. Right. So that means that the conservatives who they think, you know, push the boundary they don't like, they can get rid of and then hope that I might pick up some of these, you know, people who get left behind. I guess I, that works both ways, too, because you're talking about one side and the same goes for the other side, right? They don't they don't care about the far left. Oh, no, lunatics. They don't. For the most part, they just ignore it. OK, so you, you actually have channels that have uh, have have, you know, told people how to commit crimes and stuff. And they don't care. They don't care. Yeah, yeah, they don't care. It's it's that's 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 exactly how it goes. I mean, you look at what happened with Trump on on Twitter. Okay. Joe Biden launched his campaign by mishmashing statements from Trump to to lie. It's called the the, the very fine people hoax. Okay. Right. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I won't get into much detail. But anyway, anyway, Joe Biden makes ads where he takes one sentence and another sentence, mashes them together, and Twitter says it's fine. Trump shows one clip of something Joe Biden actually said. But it was the, the, the rest of his sentence was cut and they flag it as manipulated. So then Joe Biden comes out with another video that mishmashes words from Trump to make sentences Trump never said. Seriously, that's what he did. Wow. Yeah. Like he took a word from Trump coronavirus and then took hoax and mashed them together. Trump never said it. But now people believe he did. Wow. And Twitter refused to take it down or flag it. So then the Trump campaign did the same thing to Biden and they, they didn't do anything either. But the 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 one directional nature of how this stuff works is very, very obvious. I will add, it's no coincidence, in my opinion, that only a couple weeks after Ariel Scarcella comes out condemning the far left, they stripped her from the partner program. Good point. Yep. That's a good point. It was almost immediately after she said that she was coming out as more as more conservative or something or as leaving the left. I think she said it was right because they've gone nuts. Then what happens a couple weeks later? Hmm. She's out. 
but wouldn't no more that, money wouldn't that be make her more in tune with like your channel because the conservatives are on the right like she's saying she's leaving the left yep she, she's coming more towards the center so wouldn't that i mean you know it just doesn't make sense to me like why would she yeah she, point, it would have been right, yeah, yeah she would have been one of the safe video makers well yeah. she does talk about adult stuff yes yeah, okay yeah. like adult relationship things indeed yeah. so i think that yes. was a line for them too yeah, okay i guess and now she's she's starting to dance around on the leaving the left stuff which the media has smeared relentlessly with lies mm -hmm. and so i think there's like probably a risk assessment score or something maybe where they're like oh add these factors together the problem with luke is that luke's got a long-standing history on on youtube so you go back to what, what's luke supposed to do delete 10 years of videos they could go back to 10 years and find every video's ever done, find one of them they don't like and ban him for it. Yeah. So that's that's a serious conversation people on YouTube have had is, do we just delete every video a week later and then upload that to an archive website for people to watch if they want to watch it? I don't know. Maybe. I feel like you're the expert here. I don't know. Yeah, you know, you, 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 you look at Family Guy and I, I, I question why it is that Family Guy has a character that is a Jewish stereotype that in every possible, most demeaning way, yeah. mocks him for being Jewish. Yep. We just were watching, I think it was uh, it was Family Guy. And Stewie and Brian have a conversation about trans people. Mm -hmm. And they ask, it was like really offensive. Right. But that's fine on every platform. On, it's, it's fine on YouTube. It's fine on Netflix and Hulu. Like that scene. That scene, yeah. It was, it was, it was oh, Stewie okay. and Brian sitting there questioning what trans people are like downstairs and like a bunch of other really offensive things. Mm-hmm. You see how I have to frame the fr say these things on YouTube. Right, I know. Yeah, they yeah. will. The stream will get shut off. Like people don't realize this. There have been people who have, who have been streaming, and 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 I'll tell you what, it's not necessarily the same thing. But David Pakman, progressive YouTuber, I think it's fair to say he's progressive, liberal. He was he was streaming the debates, and they disabled his stream because he was commenting on footage that was publicly available and broadcast. It's happened to a ton of people. Even C-SPAN has been flagged. Really? So they're really trying to shut down non-mainstream content. If you are a non-mainstream personality and you are commenting on, you know, the live Democrat debates, they will ban you outright. They, 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 they ban you from live streaming. So we got to be careful. But, the, but it's crazy that we live in this world where I have to abide by a two-week delay that YouTube, for, for, because of you. So, so uh, let me restart over. The Washington Post will say, hey, maybe this started in the lab. YouTube says, don't you say it. Don't you say it. Not until the media says it. And I'm like, but the media just said it. Right. And they're like, mm. and then two weeks later, someone at YouTube finally figures out they're saying it and says, okay, now you can say it. Or a uh, Voldemort, the, the, the political guy who yeah, worked for the CIA, his name I can't say. Mm -hmm. they, I was told by YouTube, I would be allowed to say his name the moment it became a, a, a uh, in the public debate and said by politicians and by the media. Okay. And it was said numerous times on Fox News. And it was said by a couple different politicians. And then when I asked, them, I was like, okay, are we good now? They said, no. They even deleted a video of a senator speaking on the Senate floor saying his name. Wow. That's how insane YouTube has, has gotten. So anyway, I, I can wrap this one up because I think we've gone for a while with the discussion. I'll tell you this. Yeah. I would not be surprised if in the next six months, considering we're in election year, I don't know what will happen, but I wouldn't be surprised if my channels are purged. All of them outright, even this one. So who knows? Wonderful. For now, Everything seems to be going okay. Yeah. Except, Th thank you, everybody. No, yeah, but for we real. Appreciate you, appreciate guys you so guys. much. One oh of gosh. one of the reasons for wanting to do this show was like I work all day every day, and I'm seeing this happening, and I'm like, they've blacklisted my channels. Yeah, already. They deny it. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna make a new channel, and we're gonna do something different, you know, and we're gonna try and 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 it doesn't matter because when Tim Pool gets banned, all of Tim Pool is banned. Let's start a new channel and bring on uh, a soy. Kind of a soy, soy bro, soy yeah. kind of a soy Jesus, vibe. soy Chad, yeah, oh, yeah, Chad. And here I am. Yes, we'll here we'll, he is. we'll see what happens. You know, for now, it's it's not even it's, it's it's scary to see them hitting. You know, Ariel and Luke, they're both verified Twitter users. Yeah, yeah. And they're both like, very different. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely. I, how do you even how do you even figure out why they got removed? There's no like nope. commonality almost. No idea. So I don't I you know I don't know if I'm safe or not. But I, but I can say, even right now, I'm not even super worried right now. I am. But with ad revenue tanking because of, you know, COVID and all that stuff, yeah. I'm not even sure how much it matters because, you know, I've been doing the sponsor spots. And, and suffice it to say, that that made up for uh, a decent a decent amount of the loss. It, 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 the sponsor spots I've done have covered the losses okay. and, and, and done me a little bit better. 
But if I didn't do them, I'd be down substantially. So for now, with the goal being to expand and survive, like people don't understand how it works with a business. They think that if you make good money, then you're good forever. But look at all these big corporations that are like, we have one month of operating costs. Right. That's not good business. No, it's not. We'll see what happens, everybody.